Hello and welcome to Rebels Radio Latest Interview. I'm joined by Slough Joint Manager John Underdor. How are you, John? Okay, thanks, John. Yeah, better disappointed after yesterday? Yeah, massively disappointed. Um, second half performance in particular was uh, nowhere near what uh, what's acceptable. Um, and it's it's tough at the minute. We're having uh, last few weeks have been really disappointing. Um, players and yeah, we're we're not getting the performances that that we expect uh, individually and 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 collectively from the players at the moment. Um, and and it's it's not one player, it's not a couple of players, it's not one area of the pitch. It's 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 right throughout the squad at the moment, um, which is the biggest concern. If it was just one thing that we could pinpoint. Um, you know, we can put all our energy into into getting that part right, but at the moment, it's it's both ends of the pitch, and uh, that's that's the concern. Yeah, there was a concern, obviously, at the start of the game. You uh, you had to go with perhaps a slightly different change team and formation. Hatchet was unwell. Yeah, we um, we'd picked the team um, after training this week, and we had we had seventeen available. Um, decided to let uh, Gurkan go and get another game uh, at Nap Hill. Um, so we were going to go with a, a strong 16-man squad. We were going to play 4-4-2 uh, with Scott Harris and Eddie up front. And, yeah, we, we heard from, from Hatchet uh, Saturday morning. He, uh, he'd basically been up all night being sick. He'd picked up a bug uh, and was unable to play. So we, yeah, we've talked a lot about this, myself and Bakes, and we've talked about it again today. You know, if... if if we could go back 24 hours, we would um, we would put Dan Reid up front. We'd keep everything as we planned to do, and we'd play 4-4-2. Um, we we didn't do that. We we felt that uh, we we decided to go with Eddie up front and uh, Jake playing off him. I think Jake's been probably our most creative player recently, and we thought mm-hmm. if we can get him on the ball. Uh, a lot of teams play that way. A lot of teams have played against us with one out and out forward and one in the hole, and it, it causes centre halves a problem. And mm-hmm. uh, we thought it was a, a time to to try that. You know, we've been playing um, two up front all the time. Uh, we always play two up front. We thought we'll give that a go. Um, I thought it would make us solid, and and um, it clearly didn't work. I mean, I think at the end of the day, what we probably didn't really allow for. When we when we got to the game and and during the warm up, you know the pitch has really dried out now at, at Holloway's. It's it's uh, I mean they they clearly rolled it and done their best with it, but it made it quite it was quite bobbly where it's where it's dried mm-hmm. out and it's made it doesn't make uh, free flowing football uh, on the ground that easy. Uh, mm-hmm. We found this last year um, towards the end of last season when the pitch dried out and we ended up being a bit more direct. Um, but the instructions to the players yesterday were. To get the ball down, to 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 use the width of, of Dobbo and Sean, and get the ball into to Jake in, in good areas and try and create chances for Eddie. Um, with hindsight, that, that that didn't work as well as we hoped. I thought with the boys tried to play, particularly first half. I thought we played some good football at times, but uh, on reflection, probably mostly in front of their back four and not really hurting them. That we didn't create a lot of clear cut chances. Um, yeah, it was similar to Redditch in a way, in terms of the, there was a positive start, there was a lot of tempo, high energy, you know, b- beautiful day, big crowd, you, you know, yeah. you thought it'd, you'd kick on from there, but then yeah. suck a punch again, a soft goal, and it's around that time, about 30, 35 minutes into a game. Yeah, there's so many similarities to the Redditch game, um, because I think we started that game very positively as well. Um, you know, we were reasonably pleased, you, you've got to remember, this is a team not, we haven't got confidence flowing throughout the side at the moment the easiest thing in the world is to go and tell your players just to lump it um, and we didn't do that we we asked them to try and play and to their credit they did try and play first half and I thought as I said we played some decent stuff but then Cambridge were very much um, more direct mm-hmm. they they played two up they didn't really look to get it down and play they looked to just get it in the channels and, and try and force mistakes and, and their goal just came from a, a straightforward uh, ball and we'd we'd been up for a long throw and they broke and just um, stuck it in behind us and and very very soft goal from our point that that was the frustration that we've been, we were working so hard to try and create opportunities by playing and passing um, and then one very straightforward ball down through the middle and they get in and score and uh, it it was the same as last week you know a soft goal to concede uh, and heads dropped again they did and that's. That's the concern because, um, you know, we haven't all these players haven't all of a sudden become poor players, but 
the most concerning thing is the reaction we're getting now. Not necessarily at 1-0, but probably at 2-0. Um, because I thought in the second half, we, um, again, we tried to be positive. You know, we gave it about 5-10 minutes and then we uh, we put Reedy on and we, we, we tried to try something a bit different and, mm. and we asked them to be a little bit more direct. Um, but then the sucker punch of the of the second goal and the third goal, they're very much like Redditch. They followed very quickly. Um and that that's what's unacceptable. Um, that the sloppiness in our defending, you know, the we've conceded ten goals in our last three games and I genuinely don't think that there's been some good finishes in those, but there have it hasn't come from great play. It's come from soft defending, people not doing their job, people switching off, um, and people not working hard enough to protect uh, to protect the goal. Um, yeah, and at this level, the, the the opposition tend to be a little bit more clinical in front of goal yeah. and, and make you pay, you know, because uh, yesterday may not have been a 4-0 game. So. It wasn't. I mean, if, if you look at chances created and you look at uh, possession, all those things that, yeah, they don't count for anything. You know, the scoreline is, is all that counts, clearly. But if you look at the balance of play, it was nowhere near a 4-0. But you have to give credit to Cambridge. Some of their finishing was excellent. Mm. Uh, they were ruthless and we weren't. And uh, yeah, and and, and the same, the same, Redditch were the same the week before. They they took their chances, and you know I I, I won't be I won't say be any show any disrespect to Cambridge, but you know, I don't think they came and looked to play. They looked to just mm. get it forward, and maybe you know maybe we have to learn from that. If if it's the same next week, well we will learn from that. You know we'll we'll have to you know we have to adapt and we have to find a way to win games. And if that means being more direct, then then we'll do it. Um, a few players could have appeared to have gone missing, particularly as you say at those crunch times when you're 1-0 down, then you go 2-0 down. Key players go missing and a, and a whole group, not individuals. What can you do about that? Well, in some cases, you have to change those individuals, um, You know, whether that's leave them on the bench or whether that's bring in alternatives. Um, clearly not going to kind of pick out individuals. That's, that's you know, behind closed doors conversations, but there, there are players that that aren't doing it for us at the moment, that, that haven't done it for a, a little while. And, and um, you know, that's for myself and Neil. You know, it's difficult. It's it's a, a stage of a season where you don't get a lot of movement. And, you know, unless you're kind of pushing for the playoffs and, you know, players might want to come to you and have that chance of promotion. But mm-hmm. where we are in the league, we're not the most attractive proposition at the moment for players to come to. So, um, you know, you're not going to pick up a player who's regularly playing football at this league, you know, at a higher place club, then why would they? You know, um, so you know you might look at what we've done with Dan Reed and take a player from a level below, uh, or there might be a, a Conference South player who's not getting regular football who might um, be up for, for for giving it a go at, at Slough. And trust me, we're 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 knocking on all doors, we're exploring all avenues because you know we do we, we don't want to settle for performances like yesterday, and and and, and if we can't get the response out of the the players um, that we have here, we'll we'll need to try and make some make some adjustments, even at this stage of the season. Are you safe from the getting dragged into a relegation battle? As far as you're concerned, we should be, we should be. Uh, it's it's uh, it's such a shame we're even talking about that because you know a month or so ago we were looking up rather than down. But our, our recent form uh, means we do have to look look below us. You know they you know Burnham and, and Banbury are. You know, losing most weeks. You know, they you know they look like two that are going to go. Um, and there's other sides that are picking up the odd points here and there. You know, I think I think for us to go down, we'd have to pretty much not pick up another point. And mm. and and teams that have struggled to get wins would have to all of a sudden win five five games or something like that. It's very unlikely. Um, you know, we we need to get our own house in order and, and not really. Uh, worry about what other teams do. You know, we need to get some points on the board quickly. Um, and is there any messages out for the fans? Obviously, a few of them, I guess, were frustrated and perhaps venting that slightly yesterday during the game. But it, it was quite a quiet, subdued atmosphere from the start. Really, it was a big crowd. It, it was a bumper day, and and there wasn't a lot of noise. Yeah, I, it, it was a bit quieter. I mean, clearly, we're not on a good run. Um, I think the fact, you know, that new stand behind the goal, and much has been talked about that. You know. Uh, a place for the fans to congregate. You know, we told Ryan Parsons, you know, to try and kick that way, and we thought, you know, a bit of a novelty for the supporters. They'd probably get in there and make a bit of noise, and and they didn't. Um, you know, but that's you know, it's been a little bit like that all season there. But to be fair, 
you know, we've not given them a lot to shout about. And, uh, you know, I, th- I think I think everyone was positive around the ground in the first half. Like, I think they could see the, the the lads were, you know, were trying to to make things happen. Um, we were having a tough time at the minute, but I think they appreciated the the effort and the fact we were trying to play. Um, second half, clearly there was there was some frustration, and, and uh, you know the goals we conceded were were really poor, and, and understandably, I think some supporters got pretty frustrated by that. We you know we heard a few things shouted out, which they're not helpful, but you know it's you know it's it's often said you know supporters pay their money they're entitled to say what what they like and i think a bit of frustration came out in a few of them which is never nice to hear because you know we want everyone behind us and behind the players and um you know we this group of players and this management team and, and the staff delivered a fantastic promotion last season and uh you know maybe one or two have have forgotten that but you know we, we can't live off that you know we we where we are now is not is not good enough, and, and well, certainly the performances we're given at the minute aren't good enough. So we accept the frustration. It's a bit disappointing to hear, but um, you know we've got broad shoulders, and we'll we'll you know we'll just get on with it. And we know you know if we can turn things around and get some get some wins on the board, they'll soon come back and, and be positive again. So it's you know no excuses. It's down to us to get it right and uh, and give them something to cheer about. And so where do you go over the next week or so? What are the plans and what kind of core messages are you trying to work on with the players over this next week before the Truro game? Well, we said we said to them yesterday, um, you know, we obviously we were pretty critical at the end of the game in the changing room, um, particularly about the defending. Um, what we said is when you're in a, a bad run like we are, there's only one way, there's only one thing they can do and that's to work harder and and, and get together as a group and we we'll, we will train Tuesday Thursday, and we'll work hard um, to to try and to try and turn this around. You know, the obviously the only other thing we can do as managers is, is make changes, and we are seeing if there's anything we can do to to strengthen the squad and improve the squad. Um, but this group of players is good enough to to do better than it is at the moment. And you know, the, the first thing we need to do is is work with this group and get them to. You know, try and lift the spirits. You know, there's no point in carrying on running them into the ground and 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 being overly critical. You know, we were we were plenty critical enough yesterday after the game, but we need to try and draw a line under that. Work hard this week, and you know, the only way to get out of it is to work even harder, and that's what we'll do this week. And hopefully, something will go our way. It, you know, it feels like a few things aren't going our way. You know, we we could have had a penalty at nil nil, um, and and if you go one nil up. Who knows? You know, maybe it's a different game, and little things like that just don't seem to quite happen for us at the minute. I can't remember the last time we got a penalty. Um, yeah, we've had probably three or four real strong appeals turned down in the last month, and, and maybe we need that bit of luck. But we, we've got to work hard and earn that luck. Um, and if you know, we will work really hard this week, and, and we'll go into Saturday really positive. It's a real tough game, Truro. Very strong physical side. It'll be a real battle. Um, so we will be preparing the lads for a battle on Saturday and, and let's hope we can turn it around. Yeah, well, good luck. I hope the week goes well and we'll catch up with you next weekend. Cheers, John. Cheers.